right? If you don't want to do a bootcamp to land the job as a product designer, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to go through a list now of exactly what I would do if I wasn't going through a bootcamp. And it's something that you can definitely do. So stay tuned and um, we'll walk through this now. This is what a bootcamp is essentially going to teach you. So the first thing you need before you even start learning how to design is a portfolio. This is what is going to land you an interview at the end of the day. And it's best to get that started now. So from my conversations with recruiters, it's best not to do this in Figma. We're going to do this as, as a portfolio website. Don't bother designing it yourself. Use a website called uxfall.io. That's, um, you can get started for free. So you get one case study. So case studies are essentially projects that we do. Um, you get one case study for free and it gives you like a template to follow. So I'll leave all these links in the description for you to check out. So I always advise people to go to UXFOL and start your case study straight away before we even do anything. So that brings me on to case studies. So a portfolio has multiple case studies and a case study is essentially, it's not just pictures of what you've done. It's a, it's a story and it tells you all about Effectively, you have to solve a problem and product design is a solution to the problem and it goes through a process. The good thing about UX Folio is it has sections for everything that you'll need to do so you can follow along with it as you go along. But the process is essentially a designing a solution to the problems. So that's where research comes in. So you're going to want to choose a case study for yourself to do. So that might be, um, you need to think about this now. So this is, uh, you need to think about what problem you want to solve, whether that's creating something from scratch or whether that's improving an existing app or a website that you use all the time that you think you can add a new feature to. So it's perfectly fine to use both, but you need to think about something that's actually gonna interest you for the next couple of months, couple of weeks and months, so you can actually do this project. So then you've got your problem and you've got your portfolio. As you go through the UX process, the good thing about UX folio is you can follow it along. It's got, got templates for where you need it. So what you then need is templates for each section. So the product design process has different tasks to do. For example, um, in user research, you might need to create personas. And for that, you can use templates. So I'll leave a link to FigJam templates. That's um, Figma is the tool that we all use. FigJam is kind of like a bolt-on tool to it. And it has um, templates for all of these UX tasks. So uh, you can just use a template as you go along. So you, you're working through, then once you get to actual user interface design, which is actually quite a long way down the product design uh, process, really, you need to find out who your users are, what you're designing for first, do some sketches, wireframing, all of that stuff's pretty easy to propose solutions. Then when you get to UI design, which is user interface design, you're going to need to use Figma and you're going to note how to use it properly. So uh, go on over to Figma's YouTube channel. They've got loads of free tutorials there. So you can follow along and learn how to use the tool. Be the best at the tool, right? So then the next one is after you've done the UI, it's not finished. You need to then test it. So test it with your friends and family. All of the user testing tools that we use in real life are paid for and they're expensive and they're really meant to use in business. So you wanna do something called guerrilla testing. This is where you go out and you have an app on your phone or something that you've made in Figma. You test it with your friends and family, take photographs, put it into your case study. You need to show as much behind the scenes process as possible to make it realistic. Okay, so then when, you, when you've done that, your case study effectively, you summarize it up, you show the solution to the problem that you've solved. Right, so one thing I need you to do to stand out is a lot of people, when they, when they apply for roles, you, you're going to see loads and loads of case studies. Show some personality in the case study. So you won't have talked to anyone yet. I recommend making videos and walking through your case study. No longer than 10 minutes. Recruiters don't really spend much time on these. They skim through. If they're going to watch a video, it's going to actually um, introduce you to them, introduce your personality to them, and... It's, it's going to hold the retention for a lot more than just skimming through your portfolio and you're going to be able to explain yourself more. I always think this gives you advantage because the hiring manager will see it and they will know what to expect when you come to the interview and I think that makes you stand out. Right, okay, so now you've got your case study. You're going to want at least three within there. Please don't do one. You're going to need at least three. So you can see there's actually quite a lot of work that you've got to do. This is why university courses are three years. Boot camps are six to 12 months. Do three case studies, three separate problems that you've solved, right? Then the next thing to do is just don't go ahead and start applying. I don't think really anyone actually gets, I think a very minimal percentage of people get a job through applying for jobs. You basically need to network. So you need to go on LinkedIn. You need to add recruiters. Recruiters are basically people who get paid to land you roles. You need to basically find out recruiters who are hiring for product design roles within your area. You need to then phone them up, introduce yourself, 
they will always answer questions and you can you can say i'm looking to get my first role listen to their advice they are the one who will then advise you to the company they will put you forward to that company for that role before that role even gets on job boards so networking is how i get all my jobs it's how other people i know in the industry get their jobs we hear about them before they go on job boards most job board adverts are just for recruiters to find a couple of interesting people. They actually don't land the job through job adverts. Right, then the next one is, it's gonna take you a while to get a job because you'll be networking with recruiters, you'll be doing interviews. In the background, do real life projects. So you'll have three to five case studies in there. Try and make a couple of them real life. There's always businesses in your local area that can do with improving. It might be a restaurant, it might be something else. I, I did a website for my local running club for free. So I think, a lot of people say don't work for free. It's up to you. I think by doing real life projects like I did for the running club, you can put it in your portfolio, do some good for the community. Also have real life experience. It counts a lot more than doing a fake project because, you know, it's real life and there's challenges other than design. You need to work with people, with stakeholders in the business. You need to work with them, make sure they're happy. Get that in your portfolio. And to be honest, that's where a lot of jobs will come from. The running club might recommend me to someone else in the area. I would then start my own business designing websites and apps for people in the local area. That's how you can get started if you wanted to go on your own. And then, um, yeah, so then make friends with recruiters. That's how you can do it. You don't need a boot camp to do it. But if you want to do a boot camp, the reason uh, boot camps are good is because you uh, basically it's consistency. And it's having someone else to work with and check in every day and other people on your course having a structured program to do this. You can write this up yourself. Fine, go ahead and do it. My my course careers bootcamp, which I'll link to in the description, um, basically does this. Apart from you can watch me go through and you'll also have a network of people to go along with it. It's uh, it's much cheaper than all the other bootcamps, but you know, we're trying to get you a job at the end of the day. And the main point is that you go through this process and then get the job at the end. So go ahead. Try and land yourself a job in 2025 and beyond.